So do you guys know that basically um, most of your users, 53% of your users, will leave your website if it takes more than three seconds to download? Last year, I didn't know this number, but I literally face it in front of my face. Um, so basically, I release uh, my new blog post, and um, basically, I, I was getting some like readers. Like in one day, it was around 1,000 people, and then some other blog posts got like 2,000 or 3,000 people, uh, thanks to Reddit. Um, so basically, most of the complaints of the people were kind of like, "Hey, your website is really slow." Um, and for me, um, I didn't know what to do. So those those are numbers. Uh, from, from last year, basically, on how much uh, fast were my website loading. So I was kind of like, what can I do? Um, so basically, I started to research and understanding, all right, so what is the best way to do X or Y, or how can I optimize things? And this is what I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to share my findings and all the process uh, that I learned um, to improve my website. So I'm Jorge Ferreiro. Oh, by the way, where's my? Here we go. All right. So I'm Jorge Ferreiro. Uh, right now, I'm a software engineer at Eventbrite. So most of you will know because you booked the tickets there. Um, so I'm I'm basically right now specializing more in frontend. Before that, I was doing an internship at Amazon as a backend engineer, and basically my role has been uh, full stack. Um, I'm hosting a, a new YouTube show that is going to come up like next month. And basically, I am uh, write blog posts, um, and I'm a really Hamilton fan, the musical. Um, doesn't work? Yeah. Um, so I'm from Madrid. I was born and raised there. And I'm here with you for you guys. Uh, so I, I don't live in London. I live in Madrid. So I come just for the presentation. So I'm really excited about it. So at Eventbrite, basically, uh, all our stack is React. So for me, it was really cool because before joining Eventbrite, I didn't know anything about React. So it was a really, um, really interesting process to, to learn new stuff on the go. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm hosting this new TV show, which is, well, TV show, <laughs> YouTube show, uh, which is Developers in Dev and the 360. Um, the idea is basically uh, interviewing top leaders in the industry, um, CTOs, VPs, director of engineering, principal, staff engineer, and brought their stories, their findings, their lessons learned in all those years in the career to the people, especially people that are starting their careers as a computer engineers, or they're more like juniors. But at the end of the day, honestly, I think like those kind of way of thinking and ideas is really uh, interesting for, for many people. So what are you going to learn today? Um, so first of all, my expectations when I started to research uh, about web performance, then some tools that you can use to start, you know, like measuring uh, your website. And then how does the browser work? Uh, seven lessons learned and a gift. So I'm going to give you guys one gift at the end. So what is that gift? So is this t-shirt? Big applause for that or not, guys? <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So, it's it's. Oh, hold on. Perfect. So it's really cool. I'm really proud of the T-shirt. It costs money, so it's not like it's something that I, I'm putting effort on that. So how are you gonna get that? So basically, there is this uh, hashtag that is gonna appear in all the slides at the bottom. Uh, so just feel free to tell how. Don't you like my talk? How, do, how did you dislike the talk? How do you like the talk? What can I improve, what not? Any quotes, any pictures? Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to basically like uh, do a contest, a quiz. Uh, I'm, I'm going to survey that. Um, so the more you tweet, the more options you will get to earn. So let's get it started. So my expectations versus the reality. So basically, I was at home, and I was thinking, yeah, so I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to just search seven tips to improve my website, and boom, everything is going to be great. That's a myth. So what I discover is that there's no a single way of doing things, and most of the time, there's no like, do X, and you're going to get Y for your use case. So I started to research different companies, basically going to their websites, understand how do they handle these web performance things. And I learned interesting things. 
So Twitter. Um, there is a video. So this is the first thing you see at Twitter. So it's loading this part, and then it loads the who to follow and the transfer you. So basically, wh why do, yeah, and then this is the notifications part. So if you go to the notifications, it's the same story. The first thing that user sees is your notifications area. The other part is like complementary. So what I learned from that is basically, it's not about making all your website fast. It's all about making the part of your website that creates value for the business. So in the case of the Twitter, what I want from the users is, boom, see my timeline, boom, follow people, retweets. I don't want them to waste uh, time for transfer you. It's not that important the who to follow. Then I went, so that's what I call the critical path and many people call it, which is what is the most important part of your application that you should display first to the user. Then I went to YouTube and I searched for my favorite YouTube show, Peppa Pig. How many of you do you know Peppa Pig? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is what happens. This is the first loading of the website. Again, the first thing that we see is the video. People go to YouTube for watching video. And then, oh, this is crazy. And then basically, you know, they show this ad, they show the what's next, but that's what creates value and that's why people go to YouTube. So that was kind of, that was really interesting for, for, for me. So at the end of the day, my takeaway was kind of like, hey, it's all about measuring, web performance is about measuring, comparing, and also understanding your business needs. It's not about like, just making something fast just because of that. And a good example of this is Twitter, uh, Facebook. So imagine that you say, well, uh, people will go to the frequently asked questions in my website and it takes five seconds. Okay, it sucks, but doesn't matter. You will not bring money just because of that. You will bring money showing the home, doing any other stuff. So for me, that I'm a big fan of electronic music, so it's all about think first, measure, compare, repeat. Think, measure, compare, repeat. Think, measure, compare, repeat. Um, fat boy slim. I, I think he, he's from Britain? I don't know, if, well, anyway. So now let's move forward and let's see, all right. So now we understand web performance is important. Uh, I should care about web performance. Many companies are doing that. So what are the tools that we can use to understand what's going on on our house? All right, so this is kind of the popular ones. So Page Insights, it's as easy as you go, you type your website and boom, it runs like a test on mobile and desktop and you see the results. And also it's really interesting because um, it shows like different uh, suggestions, like all right, so you're doing really bad on optimizing your pictures, what you can do, and they link to, to their uh, online documentation. So it's a really good uh, learning opportunity. I learned a lot from that. Then the second one is similar, but in your browser. So if you use, for example, Chrome Canary, and I guess like in the normal Chrome, uh, if you go to the feature flags, you may find that, uh, is the uh, audits. So it's the same idea. You just run it, and locally, um, it runs like different, um, different tests. And there is uh, the last one, but I mean, it's crazy. There are many, many of them. But this one is from Node. Uh, so it's, it's a Node module. So you just require its performance and basically it has like different methods in their API. So in this case, for example, it's as simple as saying, I want to create a mark. So this is the starting of my uh, performance measurement. Then here you run like different operations and here you say end. And now you call the measure and it will show, all right, so how long did it take, et cetera. And here there are some like um, commands uh, if you download the presentation and you wanna play around with that. This is also available in, in Chrome, uh, in the browser, so you don't only need uh, Node to run it. All right, so how many of you knows exactly what happens when you hit google.com until you see everything in, in, in your screen? How many of you know that? Honestly, it's just like because you don't want to raise your hands or it's because you don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't know as well, so that's, that's cool. So for me, to be honest, it was kind of like a black box. It was kind of like magic. Like, I didn't care, honestly. 
It's like, all right, I go to Twitter.com and I see beautiful things in my, my, in my screen, but I, I didn't know what was behind the scenes, right? So then I started to research. So the first thing was, all right, let's get the HTML from the server. Um, the second part is, let's, uh, and by the way, this is what the browser does. Um, so the second part was basically an HTML transformation. So um, at the end of the day, the goal of the browser is, you pass me these kind of bytes that I don't understand, that I don't know. You tell me that the encoding is HTML. So I want to create a high level representation of that code. So this is what, it, what it's doing here. So you have this uh, tree, which is like the DOM, document object model. So you see like the different parts, uh, the different parts of the HTML converted into a tree. The second part is all about the CSS. Well, and by the way, this is exactly like the flow. So you start with bytes, which is like what computer shares, characters, token, notes, DOM. All right, now uh, you go to CSS transformation. So the browser does the same thing, but for the CSS. So again, the goal of the browser is saying, I want to create this high level representation, this tree, out of these CSS that you provide me. And finally, the goal of the browser is to create re this render tree. This is what the browser is going to use in order to print and put beautiful things in your screen. So that render tree, at the end of the day, is the combination of the DOM and the CSS DOM. So a good example of that, so maybe like the people that are like just on the back will not see this. But uh, for example, this is Spanish display known. So at the end of the day, the browser don't, doesn't want to display that to the user. So you, you will see here that, that this span doesn't appear in the render tree. And the last part is all about painting. That's it. So for me, um, there are like three concepts when it comes to web performance. The, the first one is network request. How long does it take to get that HTML from the server. The second one is parsing. So I don't know anything about this HTML that you're giving me, but I will create that beautiful tree and I, wa I will understand what's going on behind the scenes. And if, for example, if it's JavaScript, there will be some optimizations along the way. And then the third part is all about painting. It's all about rendering and displaying to the user. So one thing that I learned that surprised me a lot is that Basically, the, the part that is most consuming, time consuming, is the parsing time. So it's basically that creation of the tree. That's why uh, basically uh, the size of your uh, HTML or the size of your JavaScript has a direct impact on the parsing time and on the performance it's, it's itself. So kind of my takeaway from that was something like shipping less code reduces the time for parsing, compiling, and basically executing the code. I'm not saying write less, less code so you, your colleagues will hate you because nobody understands what you're doing. What I'm saying is like, if you have two alternatives and you can reduce the, num the number of lines uh, of the code, it's, it's perfectly fine. So just like think about it. For me, this was an eye opening because when I was writing CSS, I, I mean, I care, but I, I wasn't aware of the impact of all right, I'm writing CSS, boom, 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 boom. But at the end of the day, it has a direct impact on the performance. So now, um, let's, let's change to six lessons that I learned that I would like to share with you. There are more, so this is just like six because we don't have much time. So let's get it started. All right, so let's start with a disclaimer. Uh, as I said before, and it's like kind of like, pointed out the same thing one over and over is there's no silver bullet um, solution for web performance. And another thing was for me, don't do a premature optimization, find your real business needs. Because we are programmers, we are software engineers, where people like are starting their careers, people have with more years in their careers, and we always tend to say, yeah, I want to create the most performance thing, or I want to make like everything super amazing. Something that I'm learning right now working at Eventbrite, and kind of my business unit is incubation, is research and development, but we are building a startup from scratch, is basically how to find a balance 
between shipping software, but not like be a super perfectionist out of it. So it's hard, but I'm learning that. And I think like finding a valent and a street for uh, high quality of your software while delivering fast is important. Okay, so for me, something that is really awesome and I wouldn't expect from a technical talk is basically saying empathy with your users. For me, it's all about empathy. Honestly, before starting to research all this stuff, I was kind of like, well, I don't know even that people is using internet. But something that I realized is that not, uh, like we are engineers or business people, business that are in tech in a way, but there are many people out there that don't have the latest iPhone. There are people out there that has a really crappy Windows computer that is really slow. And even worse, there are people out there that doesn't have a high-speed internet connection. And that's a reality, especially in the developing countries. And that's something that, to be honest, I didn't think before. But now, for me, it makes totally sense. So this is more kind of the reality that you will find out there. So for example, slow access to internet, expensive internet fares. That's why um, the size of your bundle matters. Also, cheap phones, computers, etc. So my takeaway or kind of like my mental thought out of, out of it is basically code for everybody and have a team culture where basically testing in multiple devices and taking care of making sure that your code ships in multiple places is, is, is really important. For example, um, when, uh, when I joined um, Eventbrite, um, I didn't necessarily have a, a lot of like, background testing on Internet Explorer or I didn't have a lot of background testing in multiple browsers. I was like, oh yeah, I have Chrome. I'm going to just run my code, and if everything looks fine, that's fine. But then I have uh, Katie, which is our uh, product manager, and also she cares about QA and all that stuff, and say, hey, Jorge, this, that, this is not working. This is not working in Internet Explorer. Or, hey, Jorge, this is not working in Firefox. And yeah, uh, so, so for me, it was kind of like, all right. And honestly, it can be very frustrating, but once you take that into account, you started to even learn more about the CSS and the basics because you will encounter problems about the way you write your code, the way you write your styles, the way you write the, the layouts. So it's a really good learning opportunity. And that's something that I always try to do in my day-to-day -day life. So the second one, don't overwork. And I'm not, I, I, this is not something like don't overwork in your real lives, I mean, uh, when we are coding and we are uh, when we are doing websites, so load when you really need. So this is a good example of my website. So this first screen has a lot of pictures, even though I optimized them after knowing that yeah it has an impact. So it has like in the first screen you have at least three, six, nine pictures, uh, bigger ones, and then you have three more, which is kind of like the avatar. So that's a lot of pictures at the beginning. And the problem before is that when you're on, uh, in a mobile phone and, for example, you write an uh, image tag, it will literally go scan all your HTML and download every single picture that you have there. So um, I started to research and say, all right, so how can I fix that? Because honestly, if you're in a mobile phone, uh, this will shrink and you, you will only see until this. So basically, you are loading these pictures, these pictures, these pictures, the ones below, for nothing, because the user is not even there. So, um, so I researched on that, and yeah, I mean, lazy loading, that term that everybody says. So this, is, this was the improvement. I got a 99 on desktop, and I got a, a 91 on mobile phone. And here you can see, here basically in the screen is uh, in which point of the, of the website are, you are, and what are the resources uh, behind the scenes that are downloading, that are being downloaded. But, as I said before with examples with Twitter, it's not only about images. It can be more things. So for example, in the case of Twitter, as I mentioned before, uh, they don't download first this part. They don't download first that part. They are, for, for, uh, in one side, they are saving network requests. And in the other side, they are basically liberating resources. So the browser is not busy painting other parts that are not needed at that time. 
Third, something that I recently discovered, it's all about the modern images formats. Uh, so traditionally we have PNG, we had uh, J JPG, sometimes it's hard for me to pronounce like uh, words in, in English. Um, so I discovered um, that basically, it, it's really impressive, but most of the times that I discovered that the website was taking longer is because I got like one megabyte, two megabyte pictures, especially with PNG pictures, and for me that blows my mind. Because I, was, I wasn't care, like, yeah, I export this picture, everything looks great, I access to this website, and with my high internet speed connection, everything looks fine. But then I discovered that by reducing that, the first time that the user see, like the first um, render time, like the first uh, rendering part that the user will be able to interact with the website was faster by reducing the, the image size. So yeah, some formats like uh, GPEJ2000, WebP, GPEGA, XR. Um, but there is a problem, guys. Everything is not that cool. So as always, there is the problem with the cross-browsers compatibility. So in this case, for example, I found a way. Um, the link, it doesn't show up, but basically, once you download the, the slides, you will see, and you will access, and it's more in detail. But Basically, they, they, they put a bunch of fold, uh, fallbacks. So first it's all right, I want to load this WebP picture, then GPJ, and then this other one. So it's kind of like the way they specify, the, all right, so if the browser doesn't support this or that, we will fall back. All right, who loves infinite, uh, infinite list? Only me. <laughs> OK, thank you, guys. So. Um, until last year, I wasn't aware of the issues with infinite lists. I thought, well, I mean, uh, if I'm scrolling and if I get more resources from the back end, I will put it and I will just display them and everything will be fine. That's, that's what an infinite scroller does. So there is a point where you go and say, all right, so this is kind of my threshold. I fetch more resources from the back end, I put it there, and then like once the user is more to that area, we'll see the, the resources. We'll, we'll see the, the, the content. But I started to work uh, on like, my first React uh, project, which was uh, the messages, uh, the, uh, a messages application. It was very simple, nothing like super cool. So you can just swipe right to discard a message. You can put favorite. If you go here, you will see all the list of favorites messages. Something that I really love is the dark mode. A dark mode. So now everything changed and everything looks blue and I, I love dark modes. Um, and then you can search and all that stuff. So cool, so far so good. The thing with this project is that I made myself a requirement, like I put the business guy uh, hat and I said, I want this to be able to scroll all the way down, all the way down and, and nothing will be broken. Because before of that, basically, when I implemented that first solution, like the naive uh, infinite scroller, oh my god, like everything, oh, every, everything explodes. Because basically, when you have like a lot of uh, nodes, like one, th well, not one thousand, but ten thousand nodes or uh, fifty uh, thousand nodes, everything is 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 requiring resources from the CPU and requiring resources from the computer and everything is started to be really, really slow. And there was some times where basically my, my, my browser breaks. And I was like, huh. So, so basically I come up with this solution, uh, which is like I abstract um, the idea of this infinite card list. And at the end of the day, what I realized was in, in, in React Virtualize, which is a really nice uh, library, really popular, supported with many companies like Airbnb and other folks. Um, for doing like all this um, optimization um, when, when you are scrolling. And kind of the idea is basically making sure that even you are scrolling all the way down, and they get some notes. So it's kind of like a game. So this is what the user sees. They put some notes, uh, by notes I mean like messages like, let's go back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea is very simple. Um, they say, okay, so I'm now displaying three, uh, three messages for the, uh, to the user. But what, they are doing, what they are doing behind the scene is reserving some nodes on top of that 
and some nodes just below that. So basically, when the user goes up, it will get, it will um, reuse those three nodes on top of that and will display the right information. And when it goes down, it will do exactly the same. And that's the way, basically, anytime that you're getting or displaying one new message, it will not create a new node because creating new nodes is, um, has a price in terms of like resources from the CPU and resources of the browser. So that's what they do. They put a set amount of uh, nodes and they are starting to reuse that. It's, it's, it's really interesting and I also um, suggest you guys to take a look to the, um, uh, to the library and the way they implement things. Um, do, 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 do. Let's go. All right, so kind of my, uh, my takeaway from that is that infinite, li infinite lists are greedy so be careful with that. So five, simplify your code, write less. That may sound like simple or, or kind of like, all right, whatever, yeah, I would write less code, but it's true. So basically kind of my takeaway from that lesson was the less you write, the less code you write, the faster will be the parsing and the rendering. Uh, so the, the, the faster is gonna finish the parser. Uh, the faster is gonna finish the parser. Um, and also, it's really important to remove unnecessary dependencies and code. So there are some tools out there, like you can run and basically understand, all right, so I'm not using this part of this other part, but it, like, honestly, when I was like uh, preparing this talk and I review like what I did with, uh, with my website, I found like why I'm importing this library or why I'm doing this or that. And I realized, all right, I'm not using those resources anymore. It doesn't make sense to keep having like, um, to be part of the bundle, to occupy the space, and with these, like, you, you, you can do that exercise and you will be surprised. And also something that I learned that I wasn't aware before um, is basically when writing CSS, uh, the more kind of nesting and different selectors that you write here, and, and this is of course kind of like a crazy example, uh, just do for this, um, the worst. Because basically, what, what I told before about the way um, the browser creates the, the tree with the CSS, it will go deep, 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 deep. And you know, guys, like it's easier to find this, but then this and did that, it takes more time. So, take away. The shorter your CSS selectors are, the faster the browser will apply the styles. All right. This point, also weird for a technical talk. Take a coffee with Back and Fox. So <laughs> I like this meme because it's kind of like, yeah, it's scaling and just add Redis. Um, so something that I learned in a personal project that I did, uh, that I did. so the idea of Daily Focus was, uh, this was like my, in, my last, in, my, in my last year of the university, I did this project. Um, so the idea was basically integrating uh, third party services like social networks, like Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, also creating new um, services on the go, for example, the Bitcoin service to read Bitcoin news, and integrate those in the same place and help people to be productive when dealing with information, when dealing with projects, and, and that was the idea. And it was really cool because, for example, I, I found a way to create new functionalities on top of Gmail, for example. So uh, it's not in this screen, but all the email conversations that you have was, uh, were converted into chats with the idea of like seeing faster the content and, and have more like a look and feel like, let's reply quick. Um, so the main challenge with, with Daily Focus is that creating this feed, which is, uh, first of all, is a query to multiple uh, third-party services, is a query to Gmail, is a query to Facebook, is a query to the Bitcoin news, takes time and it's costly. So I couldn't basically say any time that the user hits my website, I will re-recreate re re the feed. This is something it's like, this is exactly what Twitter does. Like they don't re-recreate all the time, the timelines. They basically cache and create the timelines for a certain hours or for a certain days. And that's what they, how do they get that fast first reply. So I did, um, I did the same for my project and it was really cool. So the takeaway from this is, when it comes to web performance, sometimes it's not only something that you should do in the front end. Sometimes it takes 
uh, you need to talk with backend people. Sometimes it's a problem that you need to solve with other folks. So it's just not only, hey, we are front-end engineers, we are here, we don't talk with anybody else, and we don't care. No, it's all about collaboration, it's all about teamwork, and it's all about knowing exactly how to tackle problems uh, no matter uh, what they are. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. Uh, for me, those are like kind of my main takeaways from this talk, from what I said. So first one is measure, compare, take, uh, take action. The second one is uh, don't do uh, prematurely, I don't know how to pronounce that, but don't, um, don't optimize just because it's cool, optimize because it makes sense for you and for your business. The third is less code is equal to better if the code is readable and it is, okay, anyway. And then four is be empathic uh, with your customers. And for me, that's really, really, really important to understand. Okay, so this is some kind of resources. Um, so for example, like the 18 point web performance checklist by Adi Osmari, this, is, this guy talks a lot about that. So he's a really cool guy to follow on Twitter. And then like other resources, by the way, this one, this course from Frontend Masters, I don't know if you know that, uh, that website, but it's really cool, really high quality shows and they are not paying me for saying this. Um, okay, then uh, in my website, if you go to Ferreira.me Go Performance, um, I wrote a blog post about this. Uh, so there are more stuff that I didn't cover today. Uh, so you can go there and, and check that. I'm talking, yeah, like image sprite, use SVG, uh, a hack to load like asynchronously CSS and JavaScript. So if you want to take a look, just go there. And if you have some questions later on, you can write me on Twitter or or by email, whatever. So the last kind of quote for this is of course, like think, measure, compare, repeat, and always think about the business. So thank you very much.